um, thank, thank the organizers for inviting me to this conference. So, um, so first of all, this is all joint work uh, with Ulrich Buch here from Regensburg. And uh, before I define this uh, differential algebra K theory, I want to give you some motivation. So what for this differential algebra K theory, and this is um, a conjecture by Lott. So um, this is based on the following. So in the in the eighties, Carl Ruby gave a geometric description of topological K theory, namely um, following. Yeah, you have the topological K theory. This was introduced by Karubi in his talk also. And this is defined by some spectrum. So it defines some generalized cohomology theory. And then you can look also at the theory with R mod C coefficients. Yeah, so M is some, some manifold. And then you can, can look at this um, cohomology theory with R mod Z coefficients. And this is, first of all, it's abstractly defined as some cohomology theory, but uh, Karubi gave some geometric description. Namely, I can just give you the, some of the generators. Um, they are given as follows. So you have some, some V. This is just some, uh, some vector bundle, complex vector bundle on this manifold M. Yeah. Then you have some connection, Nabla V. So this is a Hermitian connection. So this means there are some Hermitian metric for which this is Hermitian. And then the thing is that, okay, now you have this connection, then you can form these characteristic forms by churn wave theory. So you can look at the churn character of this connection. This represents the churn class of the, of the vector bundle. Um, oh, sorry. And yeah, this you can form. And uh, what, what you have here is some differential form uh, called omega, which is now an off differential form on this manifold. It defines up to the image of D. So A means uh, smooth uh, differential forms. And the condition is that this bounds the, um, the churn character. So more precisely, here you have to subtract with the constant part the rank of the vector bundle. So this is precisely D of omega. Yeah, these are the, the generators, and then you have to divide out by some relations, and you, you get this K-theory. Yeah? What? No, this is the... Okay. And then... Um, so what, what Lot did, so he first of all, I mean, for so he wanted to prove an index theorem, and he also he proved it. So you know you can, someone index theorem means you have some analytic construction of a push-forward map and one which is topological, and the index theorem says that both coincide. And somehow then he used this geometric description to construct some analytic push-forward map for this K theory. Yeah, and then, then the next step was somehow he wanted to do something analog for flat vector bundles instead. Yeah, so this was then in the in the nineties. Um, and he considers approximately the following setup. So we now let R be the ring of integers in some number field. Yeah, and um, then, <coughs> so first of all, he defined, somehow he, he just took this description by Karubi and uh, translated this to the flat setting. So this is as follows. He defines, he defines a functor which goes from, from manifold to abelian group. And so this is called K, KR. So this R refers to, to this ring. This is not the KR that appeared before. Um, with a hat, and I put the index lot here um, as follows. So I, first of all, I give you give you the generators. So generators are now um, certain triples. So I will denote them by v hat. 
So this is, first of all, V. So this is just some, I mean, this is meant to be a, a flat vector bundle, but, but with an R structure somehow. So this is a locally constant T of um, finitely generated projective um, R module. Yeah, so this naturally also on M. So this gives you in particular a flat vector bundle. And then somehow here we had this connection to, to construct the characteristic forms. And in this case, if you have a flat vector bundle, some of the, I mean, the connection is fixed. This is flat and you need to get some characteristic form. You have to uh, choose some Hermitian metric. So this is a Hermitian metric. Um, on, on the induced vector bundle, which I will denote, denote also on the flat vector bundle. Uh, yeah, so this is the vector bundle associated to this one. So actually, one has to be a little bit more precise. So you should take for, for every complex embedding of your numbering, you get one uh, flat vector bundle and one choose the Hermitian metric there, and they should be compatible in some sense. Okay. And then the same here, so we have some, some uh, differential form eta. And this is now an even differential form on M. And I put, put an index R here. This also means that you take somehow one copy of, of the differential form for each complex embedding of R divided by the image of D. So these are the generators. And before I give, can give you the relations, I have to recall what the characteristic forms are. Um, okay, so how can you define a characteristic form in this setting? So I will denote these by omega of V and HV. So this is the following. I mean, the, the, the connection is flat, so this doesn't give anything interesting. But what you can do is you take this, um, you take your flat connection that you have, and then you have the metric. So you can also um, look at the adjoint connection. These are both flat connections. And then you, there's a standard construction of a transgression form, which I denote by churn tilde. So usually, this is precisely a D of this churn tilde. Is precisely the difference of the churn character form of this connection and this one. Yeah, and this is now a closed form because uh, both are flat. And this is now an even form, uh, I mean an odd form, sorry. Um, yeah, because we have this transgression here. OK, so these are characteristic forms. And now, um, Yeah, but for, for K theory, you divide out by some relations coming from short exact sequences or extensions. And now the, these uh, characteristic forms are in general not compatible with exact sequences. Yeah, there's some correction term coming in. This, this, this will come at the moment. It has just some differential form in this. Um, yeah, yeah, I, but I have to introduce something. <laughs> so now if you have some, um, some short exact sequence, uh, 0 to v0, v1, v2, this is an exact sequence of these locally constant sheaves of, of R modules. And you choose this uh, choose this metric, um, HV. So this is just the tuple of Hermitian metric. Yeah. Then you can form these characteristic forms of this um, of this bundle. And in general, so this this alternating sum will not be zero. Yeah. 
Yeah, but this will be an exact form in a canonical way, and this is uh, this is B of the so-called um, of a so-called torsion form, which I denote like this. So this thing here is the um, Gismet lot torsion form. Yeah, so this is canonically defined, and you have this relation. And now the relation you impose on this K-theory is as follows. So relation for <coughs> this K-R cap. This will yes. This will come, so actually, I mean, this, this will only play a role when we go to certain subgroups here. Um, so these are as follows. So we put, uh, if we have such a, such a, triple, so actually three, uh, three of them, and we put, then we put this alternating sum to be zero. If there exists an exact sequence like this, so if there exists uh, a zero as above, so exact, and now there's a relation of this uh, you require on this eta, um, and you want that this uh, alternating sum of the etas, which, co which uh, are part of this, is precisely um, the torsion form. So this is. Um, yes, yes. Every everything you do, everything for each complex embedding. I mean, this is not not precisely the original formulation, but. So these are the relations, and this is precisely uh, defined in such a way that you have a canonical map from this KR hat <laughs> theory to differential form, so which somehow gives you these uh, the characteristic form of, of your bundle minus this form eta. So this gives us a, a map C from KR hat to now um, the odd differential forms where, where you simply send such a generator V hat uh, to this characteristic form you have, of which is given by the metric, and then you correct this by this form eta. And this, this relation we have with the ethers here precisely gives that this is well defined on um, uh, omega is <coughs> ah. ah yeah yeah there's some so here's b of course <laughs> um, yeah so we have this and then he defines this uh, so-called flat part. The definition, this KR, this now has a bar. This is defined as the kernel of this map C. Yeah, so this is a subgroup here. And now what he shows then is, uh, what he shows is, so this uh, KR0, this is homotopy invariant. Yeah, this, this KR hat is not a homotopy invariant functor, so it cannot be a cohomology theory at all. Uh, but this one is homotopy invariant, but still it's not, not part of, of a cohomology theory because um, it does not satisfy the Maya de Puris axiom. So this is now the problem somehow. So what what he does now is he defines some analytic push forward map on this on this part kind of secondary k theory here. So in so in the following setting, so if pi from e to m is a proper <coughs> yes, if you, this means if you 
across this little interval, then you get the same thing. Um, so if this is a proper submersion, uh, then he defined um, a map phi lower three, which goes from the kr uh, zero bar of E to kr. No. So what you do is, uh, in this case, um, I mean, these are flat bundles, and essentially you take, so on the, on the, on the bundle side, you just take the fiber-wise cohomology, and then you have to uh, you use somehow, um, I mean, you have to, first of all, you choose some. No. No, this is just, I mean, in, in algebraic terms, this is just the push forward of this, I mean, the higher derived push forwards of these bundles. So you take some additional geometric structure on this, first of all. I mean, you take some, you have to take a, a fiber-wise Riemannian metric and some horizontal distribution. Then, then you can use this to, um, this induces an L2 metric on this fiber-wise cohomology. No, no, no. This is, this is really, I mean, you have to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and then um, I mean, then you have to to say what you do with this form eta, and that there, and you have to I mean, you do a five-wise integration, but then you have to also uh, correct this by some higher analytic torsion form. But what what he then shows is again that I mean, this is even defined on this kr hat, but then he shows that on this if you are on this kr bar part, then this is also uh, does not uh, depend on the additional choices. <laughs> and yeah. Okay, then uh, let's put this somewhere here. But I mean, this will not be essential. Um, but, but what he conjectures then is, you see now you have this analytic push forward, but there's no topologically defined push forward because this is not a cohomology theory. But what he then conjectures is um, there exists some natural transformation um, from this. Uh, yeah, so from this theory to the algebra, here this kr is now algebraic k-theory of the swing r, this again, this is a spectrum, so it defines some generalized cohomology theory, and here you take this r mod z coefficient. Yeah, this is, this is a generalized cohomology theory, and on this you have, you have a topologically defined push forward map. Yeah, this you, you always have if you have some, for any generalized cohomology theory in the situation where you have a proper submersion, you have this push forward um, because you have the so-called vector Gottlieb transfer, which is a map on, on the suspension spectra of these manifolds going in the opposite um, direction. So this is the first part of the conjecture, and the second part is, and on this diagram, you have kr0 of e, and then you have this conjectured natural transformation, kr minus 1 e with r mod z coefficients. And now here you have this push forward map phi lower 3, kr0 of m. And here you have this transformation to kr minus 1.
And here, this map is the Becker, so called Becker Gottlieb tincture. This would be a, right, this is the secondary image here. And so, and then somehow, but um, turned out to be very difficult to, to construct such a map because you don't have a nice description of this, um, of this group here in general. And this is actually what I want to talk about, how you can use this differential algebraic K-theory to establish this natural transformation. Okay, so. Um, <coughs> yeah, yeah, everything in, in a system. Uh, no, no, I, I will only, at the moment, you can only construct this natural transformation. Then you can embed this to a more general uh, conjecture somehow. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, at the moment, we cannot solve this uh, more general conjecture. Okay. Um, okay, so this is paragraph one now, this differential algebraic K theory um, for this ring of integers. And this was first introduced. Bunke and Gettner. And I just, uh, I give you the definition. I mean, this is actually, you have, you have to work a little bit to, to get this, but um, I just give you the definition and then deduce some properties. So KR, as I said before, this is the algebraic K-theory um, spectrum of this ring. Yeah. And then if you have any, any manifold, you can form the so-called function spectrum. So you can consider the following uh, functor, so which maps a manifold to KR upper M. So this is the so-called function spectrum. So the, the whole thing here is now somehow a pre-sheaf of spectra on manifolds. And you know this is like this. Uh, yeah. So what's the property of this function spectrum? So this is built in such a way that if you take the homotopy group, so KRM, uh, this is this is precisely the um, minus i cohomology theory of this KR evaluated on M. And you, you can also get the you get the usual algebraic K groups of this ring R if you evaluate on spheres. So this definition of this differential algebraic K theory will be of um, it's a homotopy theoretic uh, construction. So first of all, I'm, I uh, now need some notation. So I denote by D of M with an index R. This is again just differential forms, but I want to put them all together somehow. So I take product over all P, and then I take the usual differential forms in this manifold again for, for every um, complex embedding, and then I shift e everything by 2p minus 1. So this is just to make some of the characteristic forms uh, be in, in level 0, in degree 0. Yeah, so this is just notation. And then we had, before we had these characteristic forms, uh, right, characteristic forms for the flat bundles, um, which I denoted by omega, uh, p is, yes, Um, yes, we, have, we had this uh, characteristic forms omega, and then there's a certain machine, which I don't want to, to explain here, which from this gives you a natural transformation of this pre-sheaf of, of function spectra to, um, yeah, I mean, you can describe this in a certain way using these flat bundles with additional structure. Then you have these uh, characteristic forms, which give you differential forms, 
and this means on this side you you end up in the in the Eilenberg with lane spectrum of this uh, complex here in this R. So this is the Eilenberg with lane, which gives you for every complex gives you a spectrum which has whose homotopy is precisely the cohomology of this uh, complex. Yeah, so we, we have this on the level of, of spectra or even of free sheets of spectra and then the definition of this uh, differential algebraic K theory is as follows. So we define KR hat. So this is now a pre sheaf of spectra as the following homotopy pullback. Yeah, so we have this um, We have this KR function spectrum here, and then we have this map to this complex here. Uh, and I forgot to I forgot to mention something. Yeah, and now we take the same complex but truncate it in degree zero. So we take H um, D so this is sigma. Yeah, this has a natural map to this one here. So this, uh, this is a so-called stupid oops, truncation. So this, you just cut off this complex in degree zero, and this means that you somehow you, you uh, in degree zero the, the uh, homotopy now is just the the closed forms. Uh, there's no <coughs> and then we take this pullback here, and this gives us Kr hat. And then you have the structure maps. They have they are usually denoted by I. So this gives you somehow for each class here you get an underlying K theory class, and this map here R, which gives you from a class here gives you a certain differential form. This is called R um, to remind you of the uh, curvature, the connection. Yeah, it is uh, it is related. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so w there's there's one uh, important point I, I forgot to say here. So what what is this map? So if you evaluate this on a point A or on, on spheres, then here you get just the algebraic K theory. Here you get certain certain vector spaces, and this map here is just so this is a well known fact from from uh, topology. This is the Borel regulator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. In fact, there is some. I mean, there is a relation. If you, if you go further here from from this algebraic K theory to topological, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Then on the relative side, you have this somehow. The, you have this map on the fibers, which you can. This goes then to. I mean, here to the fiber, which is somehow you cut off in the other direction. And this is isomorphic to cyclic homology, and this is the relative strain character. Yeah. Okay, and then just just uh, notation. So Kr hat zero of M is by definition just uh, pi zero of the spectrum Kr hat uh, evaluated on M. Yeah, I mean, you can essentially, this, this is in, I mean, if you define it like this, that's the only interesting part, but you get somehow al also other things. If you evaluate on so somehow an I-sphere times the manifold, so you can reduce everything to pi zero. Yeah. So you see also, I mean, what is a class in this K theory? It contains this information of an underlying K theory class, which is here, and then this differential form. And, but it's, it's, it's more somehow like of this because there's also, I mean, you have, 
here you have some homotopy, so this is some, uh, some secondary information which, which is uh, encoded in these classes there, in which you can, some, um, you can uh, sometimes use the secondary information to construct new interesting classes in case theories, but I, w I will not talk about this today. But then you have the following properties, which are some of from this definition are just easy exercises. So the first one is, I mean, if you look at the homotopy fibers and then at the long expressed uh, sequences co um, corresponding to these, so you get the following. So you have a map from, yeah, for both. One stands for the horizontal and the other one for the vertical. And they are, um, yeah, so you get the following. This is just the homotopy in degree one of the um, vertical map. Yeah, and then you have a map called A, which maps to this K0 here, KR at zero of M. And then you have this map which takes the underlying case theory class, KR zero of M. And this is surjective. Yeah, so this is just part of this long expressed sequence. It's quite easy. And also in the, if you take the uh, horizontal um, homotopy fibers, you get the following. The kernel of this map R, so you have this map K R hat zero of M. You take this map, uh, the, the curvature map to this lens now in the zero cycle, so in the closed forms of this complex. Yeah, and this is isomorphic to um, KR minus one of M with R mod Z coefficient. I, I mean, here you use some of that the Borel theorem that the regulator induces an isomorphism after tensoring with R. And you see, this is precisely what we want to have. We want to, we want to construct something which has the values here. No? And then to actually get some such a, such a, such a map from, from lot um, K theory to this one, you need some construction which where you have to somehow this flat bundle, this kind of geometric structure, and which gives you a class here. And this is also, this is called the cycle map. Um, so if you have a flat bundle and a Hermitian matrix, then it associates that a class which I denote like this. Um, yeah, th so this is a class in KR at zero of M, which has the following property. So if you map it by the curvature, to um, the differential forms. So this gives you precisely the characteristic form associated to this bundle here. So this goes to this omega to the VAT, uh, which is here. And on the other hand, if you take the underlying K-theory class, <coughs> uh, yeah, this is precisely this, I mean, this bundle here, you can also think of this as somehow uh, a, that's a projective R module which is parametrized by this M. So this is precisely a class in this KR zero of M, in which I do not like this. So this commutes. Yeah. I mean, here you have to, at some point, you have to work a little bit because this means that you have to, I mean, you, you give, give a map to this corner and one to this corner and then you have to construct an explicit homotopy. So so actually in the in the way this uh, this map here, this that we construct this Borel regulator, so this is clear. Yes. This is the <laughs> no, no. That's that's a that's a real map in some sense. Yeah, I mean, I say we have, we have some some real map which just associates to every geometric bundle this characteristic form, and then we apply some machine. Which essentially what you do is um, you make this. Hom I mean, this is then not homotopy invariant, um, but you can make this homotopy invariant in this manifold direction and then you prove that that you somehow um, this if you start with these vector bundles with this additional geometric structure and make this homotopy invariant then you precisely get a model for this 
uh, function spectrum of algebraic case theory. And on the other side, you get the um, precisely this a model for this Einberg and Klein spectrum. Okay. So we have this, and now we can somehow define a, a candidate for this for this map from from lot theory to to this new one. So using this, uh, we define a map phi. Uh, so we define phi of some one of these lot generators. Yeah, what do you do? You just take um, you take the cycle map, and then you have to correct by this differential form. And there you use this map A, what I, what I have in this proposition there. So plus A of eta in KR 0, 1, hat. Yeah? And now uh, the goal is somehow, I mean, this will be compatible with this cycle map, uh, with this curvature map. So we have to show that if we take some something in this uh, bar theory of lot, then this lands really in the, in the kernel of this R. So this will be what, what we want in this case theory. Okay, but of course you have to prove something because we divide it out by these relations in, in lot case theory. And this is now the theorem, the main theorem, which was proved by, by Bruce and myself. So given um, if we have such an extension, uh, vi and h vi, uh, and an exact sense, Zero, v one, v two, v zero. Yeah. Then the following relation holds. Then this um, sum minus one to the i of these cycle classes. Yeah. What we have to show is that this there was this relation with the sigmoid lot torsion form, and so we have to show that this is precisely the class associated to this sigmoid lot torsion form of this extension. Um, I, I think it is correct like this could, but uh, could also be like that. Um, um, yeah, per perhaps then I take minus q. But I mean, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm not completely sure what, you, uh, what the right thing is, but Yeah. <laughs> okay, so so re remark is um, this implies <coughs> the first part of lot convector. So we get this map phi, which maps k r bar. Zero to this uh, kr minus one. Okay. And now somehow, yeah. Then I mean, this was already uh, Bunke and Gebner knew that they had to prove something like this, but somehow they worked very hard and um, couldn't prove this. And the point is that somehow you, you get a nice proof if you um, if you generalize this from number rings to higher dimensional algebraic objects, and this is somehow um, the next part. <laughs> <laughs> Who had to work hard or what? <laughs> Bunke and Gebner. I mean, they they tried to prove this, of course, because. This was the original motivation for them to introduce this. Oh, this was what they tried to prove. Hmm? This was what they tried to prove. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the higher dimensional case. 
so higher dimension and uh, refers to the dimension of the algebraic object, uh, which was the numbering, so in some sense zero dimensional, and now I take something higher dimensional. So I just give you the recipe somehow what you have to do to do the following replacement. So before we had we had this ring of integers r, and now we want to replace this by um, x, which is some some scheme. So uh, this is regular. I mean, this is just some technical condition separated and the final type over the integers. Or you could also work over the complex numbers. It's the same. So in particular, what what we have from this, because we we also want to use this differential geometry. If you look at the key value at points, it could be empty, but if not, then this is a complex manifold. Yeah, so this is the first replacement. Then the question is, before in this, here we had the Borel regulator in this number uh, field case. And then from, from arithmetic geometry, so you somehow you know what you, what the uh, replacement here is, and this is the so-called Valenton regulator. So this is a map from the algebraic K theory of such uh, such schemes to a certain cohomology theory, which I uh, recall for you. So this is with values um, in Deline or Deline valence and cohomology. And I mean, I don't give you the precise definition, but in principle, what you have is that's a cohomology of the following complex, which I again uh, denote with the same symbol D. So what do you do? Um, you take a this is a certain cone where somehow you have you look at um, real valued forms but up to a certain twist and real valued forms I denote like this um, plus yeah this is yeah I just say something like this and then there's a second term this is so called Hodge filtration a p valued forms and then both both these uh, things map to the full Dirham complex, which is just a P of length. Yeah, so now because this now if you if you put in if you put x here, yeah, you then you have this algebraic manifold. And if you look at characteristic classes of vector bundles of algebraic vector bundles, then first of all you know that these are real classes, but also you know because they are algebraic, they will lie in this part of the Hodge filtration. So this means this F P means there are at least P disease somehow in the differential form. Yeah, and then uh, again I take everything, I shift this by 2p minus 1 as before and take all the folders um, all at once. Yeah, and then you can, I mean this, you can evaluate on, a, on this algebraic object, so on <laughs> uh, strictly speaking on, on the complex valued points. But you can also evaluate it on something like a manifold times this, times this x. Yeah, this is still defined. You know, you can make sense of this. So this is uh, a cohomology. Uh, yeah, if you, if you, yeah, yeah. If you, if you want to to get this somehow, this uh, this old D M R. I mean, this I know this is not very consistent, but this is. Uh, quasi isomorphic so d of m times check spectrum of r yeah and this complex lift is inside this one canonically and this is a quasi isomorphic group okay uh Now, what are the geometric objects? So before we had these uh, locally constant sheets of of R modules, and they will now be replaced by certain um, vector bundles in the sense of locally ring spaces.
So we had these bundle, these uh, sheaves, and we replaced them by locally free, finitely generated um, modules on the following on the ring space. Um, so we take the product of, of the manifold times our scheme, so this exists as a, as a ring space, and as a structure sheet, we I mean, as, as a space, first of all, and as a structure sheet, we just take uh, the inverse image of the algebraic thing. So this means the, these bundles are flat somewhere in the manifold direction and they're algebraic in the, in the x direction. And when you, when you think about what this gives you, so in particular, you again get some associated complex vector bundles. So this gives you the C over m times x of c, um, this is the c vector bundle. And as I said before, so this is, of course, this is no, no longer flat because you have this algebraic direction, but this somehow is naturally equipped with <coughs> uh, nabla 1, which is a flat partial connection uh, in, in the m direction. And also because this was algebraic, you have, an, uh, you have a holomorphic structure d bar, so a holomorphic structure in the x direction. Yeah, and now you ask how you can form a characteristic form. So what, what kind of additional geometric data do you have to choose? So before we had this Hermitian matrix HV, and now uh, we press replace this by a so-called geometry, uh, which is a pair G, consisting of again a Hermitian metric, but also you have to choose some some connection, number V, which of course should be compatible with, with this what you already have. So um, so this is a connection um, extending. Partial connection, what we have, nabla one plus d bar. So essentially, you have to choose something only in the holomorphic direction. Okay. Now, if you have if you have this uh, these geometric things, then you can again uh, build characteristic forms. So this gives us characteristic forms. Um, omega I again denote this by omega uh, of, of bundle and the geometry. And these now lie in this complex. So these are zero cycles in this complex. Okay. So this is this is what you have to do, and then you can somehow apply the same machinery as before in this um, in this number ring case. And I just summarize this. So prop proposition or definition. Um, you, you do the same construction, this kind of homotopy pullback, and uh, the result is you have again this functor now k hat zero. Now this is a functor from manifold times this algebraic object, and I write for this category I write rec c, so regular certain regular schemes over these uh, two abelian groups. Yeah, and you also have this cycle map which gives you a class in this theory from, from, a, from, from a bundle with this geometric additional structure. And of course, everything lives in this commutative diagram. Here you have, sorry, it's not so nice. <laughs> you have this uh, curvature map to the closed forms and the, to the closed forms of this complex. Yeah, here you have the underlying K-theory class. Uh, K, ah, so this is Kx, somehow now the algebraic K-theory section of X, in degree zero evaluated on M. And here this goes to the cohomology of this complex and H zero. Okay, so this projects, this is also projective. And you have this commutative diagram where this thing here is precisely Balenson's regulator map. <coughs> <coughs> the, 
Yeah, I also have this the same as before, but I, I will not need this any. I just didn't want to write the same thing again. This is the we have now we have a function. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we somehow we do everything functorial. I mean, we view everything as a precious on this strange side. So also. Um, yeah, but then I mean, at some at some point, then you have to work because I mean, you want ah. to construct the cycle, <laughs> the cycle map. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You you can use. I mean, yeah. No, I mean, if you just take any any uh, state theory spectrum of X, any model, and then you you somehow construct this uh, functorial mapping spectrum, function spectrum, then it's not at all clear how you would construct the cycle map. So you need spe specific choices from that. Okay, so this is was this higher dimensional differential algebraic case theory. And now you see because there are these, um, because we have these differential forms showing up in and this is not a homotopy invariant theory. It's not homotopy invariant in the manifold direction, but also not homotopy invariant in the algebraic direction. And you know that, that these theories here, the, the K theory and also this Boolean valency cohomology, they are homotopy invariant in the, in the algebraic direction. So this is not the case, but you, you know what happens. So this is the next paragraph, it's very short. You can somehow um, measure the failure of homotopy invariance. This is as follows, so proposition. So for some technical reasons, uh, this is not uh, what you would expect perhaps. So there exists a natural uh, homotopy operator, um, which I call integral. And this goes from m times x. Now you would have to expect to have a1 here, but this is somehow uh, turns out to be quite difficult and instead I take P1. This is uh, easier. So this uh, lowers the degree by one. Um, which satisfies the homotopy formula such that so, uh, <laughs> B integral is integral uh, B as the difference of I zero upper star minus I infinity upper star. Yeah, so first of all, this is the homotopy operator on, on the level of differential forms. So you can construct this using using Hodge theory. And now what is the, the failure of, of homotopy invariance on this differential algebraic K theory? We can describe as follows. So if you have some class X hat and K at zero of M times X times P1, yeah, then if you pull this back along zero and along infinity, so this will not be zero. So what you know is the underlying K theory classes, they are the same because K theory is homotopy invariant. So you know this, this must be in the image of this map uh, A, what I had before from differential forms. This must come from some differential form and you can write down explicitly what this is. So this is uh, you just to take you take the curvature of your this class X hat has a certain curvature which is a differential form then you apply the homotopy operator and then you take again the associated different differential algebraic K theory class okay so so this was uh, this part and then uh, first invisible oh it's hard no I have to Hurry up. Now somehow this, now we want to we have this connection with the, with the Swissmuth lot torsion form.
this comes as follows. Construction of the torsion form. So how is this done? So to recall, the, the situation was you have some manifold M, and then you have given given an extension V V zero V one V two of uh, flat bundles, and you have given some Hermitian matrix, a tuple of Hermitian matrix. Yeah, now I want to give you a construction of the torsion form that, that you can somehow connect then to, to what we've done. So what we do is we now deform this somehow over this over P1 in the algebraic direction. Yeah, so we define a certain bundle W over manifold times P1. This is the algebraic P1. Namely, you, you would just take the following. So um, you take V0 times this twist bundle O twist 1 and V2 tensor mean tensor O. So O is OP1. Uh, yeah, this is a certain bundle on, on M cross P1. And now we equip this with, a, with, a, with this additional geometric data. So, um, so with a natural, and this is important, but this can be done in natural uh, geometry. V W in such a way that if you pull this back, so if you pull this back at, at, at zero, the bundle together with its geometry, you precisely get somehow what you had before. So this is V zero with this matrix plus uh, V two with its matrix. And at infinity, it's precisely the other thing. So at infinity, uh, this is um, V1 with its matrix HV1. Okay. So this can be done in a, in a natural way. And then we define uh, T prime of V and this geometry HV. Uh, so what we do, we, we take this characteristic form of this bundle with its geometry, and then we apply this homotopy operator over P1. So this is now a form in, so yeah, so this is now in V uh, minus one of M. Right. Yeah, and now we can, we can compute what the boundary of this is. So then V of T prime H F, okay. V and H V. Yeah, now we use this homotopy formula we had before because this is a closed form and then this term vanishes and you just get the difference I zero star minus I one star. So this is precisely the alternating sum of these characteristic forms, uh, VI and HVI. Yeah, and now I just write down the, the last uh, proposition, and then you can, I mean, then you are nearly done. So in fact, you get this T prime VHV. This is congruent to the infinite loss torsion form up to normalization. Um, Modulo the image of the differential. Yeah, and this follows essentially because you have for this piece of lot torsion form you have an axiomatic characterization. I mean the the construction is quite different, but they they give an axiomatic characterization. And uh, I mean one important thing is of course this formula that this v is v of this form is this alternating sum, and then it must be natural in 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 the manifold and so on. So we, from this axiomatic characterization, you get this, and somehow now you just have to put this together, then you get precisely this uh, this relation we had to prove. So this, um, yes, yeah, this theorem. Yeah, thank you.
Yeah. I mean, yeah, it would be interesting. So, so I mean, what I don't know is what is somehow, I mean, what is the role precisely of these, uh, of the geometric data? How, how do you get a, uh, a cl I mean. Yeah, it would be interesting, so, but I don't know. 